All right, hey everybody, this is Mr. V, and this is Apes Review Video, Topic 7.2 on Photochemical Smog. So we look here, and we mentioned smog in the last video, but the way this works is it's a really good combination of taking a look at our water and radiation, uh, solar radiation, combining things like our nitrogen oxide. Remember we mentioned our NOx chemicals? Well, what happens with those is that ends up reacting with our oxygen in the atmosphere, and this ends up of course, also reacting in the presence of VOCs, and, uh, which are volatile organics, and that ends up forming photochemical smog. So it's kind of a mix, and it's not exactly a specific chemical. It tends to be a mix in di different variations. And of course, um, the formation of ozone is involved in this as well. So it's not an exact precise um, amount of each one, but in the presence of these, and when you tend to have more pollution, this ends up uh, becoming a problem. So as you can see, volatile organics, their source, we've mentioned these a couple times already, tends to be um, things that vaporize pretty quickly. So they go from the liquid to gas really fast. And so when we're looking at uh, pumping gas in this picture here, that's going to release some volatile organics in here. And so you can see these in benzene, in ethylene glycol, formaldehyde, gasoline, and of course there are natural VOCs in trees. So you know if you like that smell of your Christmas tree during uh, uh, the holiday season, then that ends up being the smell of volatile organics coming off of those uh, leaves. And so, of course, there's other contributing factors on smog that play a big role, and that's, of course, going to be the time of day. So depending on how much sunlight and UV rays you're getting, those nitrogen oxides, they're going to be um, showing quite a bit in the morning from that vehicle combustion, and then that ozone peaks in the late afternoon. And so typically during the season, the, su the summertime, which is the sunniest, that's going to have those reactions quite a bit. And then, of course, if you're in an urban area where there's a lot more vehicles and a lot more industry, that's more of a chance of getting some of that photochemical smog. So um, it's important when you're doing the AP exam uh, and answering questions, especially in free response, to note that we're, you have to be specific on what's the cause or what's the problem, right? Um, you can't just say, oh, well, it's bad for your health. Well, yes, but you have to say exactly how. So in this case, you can say, that photochemical smog leads to respiratory problems, and those can be exacerbated. So if you already have emphysema, things like that, this could be another problem. And of course, you can end up with eye irritation. Um, so it's important to mention those and be specific when they ask you a question about the health effects of certain pollutants. And so as you can see, we mentioned the Clean Air Act in the last video, um, but reducing smog has been an important part here. So as uh, we've gone through time uh, since the 70s with the Clean Air Act, um, the reduction of nitrogen oxides right, um, has really helped in reducing photochemical smog. And then, of course, VOCs, um, we'll talk about some of the uh, reduction methods later, but the capturing and, and preventing of VOCs to get in the atmosphere has been a big help. So it's, again, you can't really find a way to get rid of photochemical smog itself. You have to get rid of the sources that form it, okay? and that's an important thing to mention. And so here's some other resources you can look into that will hopefully be helpful, and hopefully this video was helpful. Thanks.